Hi, I'm Liv. I am here to tell you about the Thrifty Notion August Fabric Collection. Now, this is one of my favorites because it's it's kind of our workwear collection. We do one sort of denim based collection per year and this is my favorite because I love me some workwear. Um, I'm wearing all Duluth today. Shout out to Martha. One of our little little uh, little birds flew out of this nest and went over to Duluth. So we're kind of proud of that. Anyway, uh, love me some workwear as far as the hierarchy of needs and whether you should buy secondhand, new, all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, use what you have. If not, go secondhand. If not, see if you can make it. And if not, then buy the most durable thing you can buy that's going to last for forever. Um, I can attest these overalls are awesome. Plus, I keep finding pockets I didn't know existed. They're like just hidden all over the place. It's kind of fun. All right. So anyway, overalls. You should make some overalls. I am in the process right now of making some overalls. In fact, by the time you see this video, hopefully they will be finished. Um, it is a lot of steps and um, a lot of paying attention, but it's doable and it's not that hard. It's just a lot of steps. So I encourage you to give it a shot, especially if you're a person who wears overalls all the time. Okay, here we go. First up, let's start with like the bottom weight overalls kind of fabrics. We have a nice chunky corduroy. This is just a nice gray corduroy called Foggy Morning. It's sort of a medium whale. It's not a really wide whale corduroy, but it's got a pretty stiff drape to it. Not fluid. Okay. This one's pretty heavy. This is a navy. It's called By Stretch Lana. Um, it's from Robert Kaufman. It's another of those warehouse deal kind of situations. This one has polyester, rayon, and spandex. So it's a little stretchy, not super duper stretchy, just just a little bit of give to it, making this really a good candidate for something like a work shirt, like a button up. You could also do something like slacks out of it. It's fairly opaque and it's it's got a pretty fluid drape. So you could do like a wide leg trouser that would kind of be floaty and fluid. Just a really versatile fabric. All right, one more of those Robert Kaufman warehouse clearance fabrics. This one's a poly cotton twill. So it looks just a little bit like denim, almost more like like what khakis are made out of, but it's a poly cotton. So it's going to breathe a little bit, but it's also going to be really durable. And it's perfect for making something like overalls out of, and it's not super thick. So it'd be like really comfortable ones. Um, and the thing with overalls is you've got so many pockets and seams and different things happening that your, your seams can get really chunky, really thick. Um, so a thinner fabric that's really durable is actually ideal for that. So slacks, skirts, overalls, shorts, all of those things, this is really good for that. And it's in a nice like graphite gray color. Ooh, you could even do like a jumpsuit, like a, like Dickies. That would be cool. We have a couple of just actual denims. Uh, it's very rare that we get denim donated or like secondhand de-stash, but it happens every once in a while. So this one is called Dig It, and it's just like a medium wash denim. It's, it's um, pretty sturdy and it's not stretchy. So that's Dig It. Then we have a slightly lighter wash that's called Play in the Dirt, and this one is a little bit distressed. Like it just, it sat on the bolt for so long that it's been folded for a really long time. And so there's just a little bit of wear, like a little, little bit of fading and wear on the fold of the fabric. So that's a thing to be aware of as you're cutting out your pattern pieces. And on both of these, we have just, just enough for one person to make a pair of pants, unless you're doing shorts or something. All right, next I'm gonna do our like animal fibers. So we've got, this is a wool twill. It's called biochar. It's a really pretty gray color and it's a twill weave, which means it's got that same diagonal weave pattern that denim has. And it's kind of a similar weight. It's pretty chunky, pretty sturdy. It isn't very soft. Like this is one of those little more itchier wools. Um, so you'd probably want to line it, but it would make great pants. It would also be really great as like a barn jacket, like a shacket. I don't know if I like that word. I haven't decided yet. Um, I'll just hold it. 
um, like a shirt jacket, but definitely you would want to line it. It would be really cute and really warm. Plus, if you wanted to, it's like plain. You could like kind of do the workwear, but like pretty it up with some embroidery. It might be kind of fun. There was this trend in the 70s, just briefly, um, to just have embroidery on work shirts. It was like an odd little, I don't know. My mom did it for my dad. He had like a blue, you know, literally the work shirt that has like the name patch on it that says Bill or whatever. Um, but then she embroidered like bumblebees and butterflies and little chicks. <laughs> it was very cute. Okay, another wool, not a twill. <laughs> This is a border print. It's so pretty. Not exactly work wear, but it went with the color scheme. So it's this really gorgeous border print and you can see it's really fluid. It's nice and light. So wool like this is really pretty for skirts. It's like a, a lighter weight skirt, but it's gonna breathe, but it will also keep you warm. Wool is strange. Um, because it's for an animal, it like, it breathes and gives you ventilation and wicks away sweat, but then it also will keep you warm. So it actually works pretty well in the fall. So if you were to make a skirt out of something like this, then if you wore a slip or leggings underneath, um, you would be really nice and warm. But if you didn't want to be, it would also like ventilate. So something to know about wool. Another one that's not exactly work wear, but again, went with the color theme. This is silk. It's just like a, a silk satin. Look at that drape. So pretty. Really cute little blouse out of this would be ideal. Um, yeah, that's probably the best thing. It also is reading as a lining. Um, if you wanted a really bougie barn coat, you could line your barn coat with this. Um, that might be a bit much but it makes a really nice coat lining as well. So this next stack is all just like plaids and stripes that are um, flannel or brushed cotton. And there's a very slight difference between the two. So first off, I'm gonna show you the flannels. This one is called Wild and Free. And this is like a nice quality, kind of a, like a quilt shop quality flannel. It is thick and <laughs> um, really, really soft and it's brushed on both sides. That's what makes it a flannel. If it's fluffy and soft and brushed on both sides, that's a flannel. So this is a very nice one. It's also extra wide. Usually they're 45 wide and this one is 64. So again, those, just those flannel shirts or pajama bottoms or whatever. This one's called Off the Beaten Path. It's, you know, rugged and such. Another really nice flannel. This one is 62 inches wide and again, pretty substantial. Like it's, it's a chunky, thick flannel, a nice quality one. This is not the big box store cheap flannel. This is the good stuff. Actually, let's just talk about it. This is actually a brushed cotton. So the difference between flannel and brushed cotton is that Brush cotton is only fluffy on one side. So the back side of this is smooth. So for that flannel shirt, if you decided to, if you wanted to, you could put the fluffy side on the inside and put the smooth side out. And then it's more of like, it's just like a plaid shirt. It's not a, not a flannel shirt as much, or it doesn't look like one. So that's an option. It looks a little bit more like homespun on the, on the smooth side. And that brings me to these four. These are all, again, that warehouse clearance. It's not quite dead stock, but it's like one step from being dead stock. It's several, several years old and has been sitting in the warehouse for a while. So we try to pick those up because they're usually a decent price. Um, so this one is called No Till and it's just a striped, like a black with charcoal stripe brushed cotton. So it is fluffy on one side and the other side is smooth and looks like um, homespun just a nice cotton. These are not as thick, but they're still a really nice soft fabric and they're, they're a little more fluid, you can see. So really just all the things you would do with flannel, you can do with brushed cotton. Uh, you can also quilt with it if you want that smooth side um, facing out, then it just looks like almost like a shirting. So super versatile fabric, gives you lots and lots of options. So this one's called No Till and a nice plaid called Hen House. All of these together would make a really cute throw, like a cabiny, cozy throw, if you wanted to quilt with them. 
And this last one is called Cloudy with a Chance of Showers. Just a nice kind of slate, blue, gray plaid. Really just cozy, kind of a down home feeling. All right, this last pile is all kind of lighter weight shirting kind of weight fabrics. So first up, I have a little stack of chambray. Chambray is, I don't know, Oxford shirts are made out of it. Those button ups that people wear to the blue button ups that people wear in offices. So this one's called raking it in. And one of these was a poly cotton. So, yep, it is this one. It's a poly cotton. So it's going to be more durable. So there's that light color chambray. It's, it's sort of like it's got blue threads and white threads woven through. And so it makes kind of a, an interesting texture. This one's called Garden Variety, and it straight up looks like denim, but it's actually a really dark chambray. Um, so it's more, I mean, it is, it is a twill weave like a denim, but it's just lighter weight. So like a, um, you could do like a shirt out of this one as well, like a button up shirt or like a dress, a shirt dress or a wrap dress. Lots of potential here or like baggier, more loose fitting um, overalls. Although I'm not sure there may not be enough here. It's two yards. It'd be, it would be close. Nice versatile fabric. All right, this one's called Get Grounded. We have a little bit more of this chambray and it looks a little bit more um, washed, like almost not quite stone washed, but a little more worn in. Again, like you could do dresses, shirts, just lighter weight stuff. All right, this one has a pretty fluid drape. It's called Road to Hoe and it's got <laughs> kind of a lacy vibe to it. It's a really pretty stripe weave and it is fairly sheer. Great for something like a sundress. It would be a really cute sundress or like a, a lighter blouse, something a little more frilly and fluffy. Um, or just like simple, I guess, like a woven t-shirt. This one's more of a formal fabric. It's called Morning Glory and it's like a crinkle chiffon. It's just a sheer, synthetic, fluffy, floaty fabric. Good for like overlays or, um, you know, see-through blouses, those kind of things. If you gathered it up and lined it, it'd be like a cute little broom skirt sort of situation. Here's another crinkle. This one's just a cotton, like a, almost a gauze. It's really, really lightweight and pretty see-through, fairly sheer. And it's crinkly, I think on purpose. I mean, you could iron it, but it wouldn't stay smooth. So just go with it. It's a crinkle cotton and we'll call it that. Um, it's supposed to be like that. Nice and lightweight. Again, sundresses, blouses, all the lightweight things. This one's called Nip It In The Bud. It's a clip dot cotton, so it makes great shirts. I mean, that's, it just looks like a shirt pattern. That's just what it looks like, but it's a clip dot. So this pattern is woven in and on the back, all the little extra threads have been clipped off. So it's fluffy little dots on the back. All right, this is a synthetic, it's like a polyester shirting. Um, it's called Homegrown. It is just real, <laughs> slightly sheer. It's a shirting. It's just a cute little dress. If you need to, if you need a Dorothy costume, you could do that, like just a classic gingham. All right, this one's called Full Bloom and it is a little fancy. Like it's got this floral motif that is woven in. So that means it's a jacquard, it's woven through the fabric, but it's also a twill weave. So in the background, there's that diagonal weave pattern that you can see that's very similar to denim. So this one's pretty much reversible. Like it looks, it looks equally nice on both sides. So depending on what you prefer, you could go a little darker or a little lighter. Shirts, bl blouses, dresses, skirts light floaty things. Okay. This last one I was very tempted to keep. Um, it's not quite reading well on camera, but it's, it's like a charcoal gray with just a touch of blue to it. It's really hard to say if it's navy or gray, but it's just this yarn dyed woven. That's got this nice streaky design going through it. And it is called Scattered Showers. It's just a really nice cotton. I was thinking a shirt number one or like a strata top would be great out of this. And I almost took it home with me to make one of those, but I decided realistically that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So I figured I would let other people have a chance at it. So that is the final fabric for this collection.
Happy sewing!